So back in summer 2018, Adult Swim's Toonami Action Block aired Fully Cooly Progressive and Fully Cooly Alternative, the sequel seasons to the original Fully Cooly that first aired in the year 2000 as a creation of Studio Gainax, Production IG, and King Records. This time around though, the sequels are mostly being helmed by Production IG, and obviously, I don't think they're as good as season 1, but I do have some constructive opinions on progressive and alternative that I want to talk about, what each one handles best, and what each one could have done better. To quickly recap what went down in Fully Cooly Season 1, which actually isn't that difficult now that I think about it, Basically, a pink-haired alien from outer space uses a 14-year-old boy's forehead in an attempt to summon another space alien, but instead winds up with robots and electric guitars because the boy is a teenager who isn't always emotionally stable. Put simply, Alien Girl uses Earth Boy to make robot battles happen, and everything else in the show is just building off of that premise as well as the theme of adolescence. It's really all about Naota Nendaba's life as a teenager, how he feels about the world around him, his frustrations, and how he doesn't really understand maturity. Since Naota's story concludes with Season 1, the Fuli Kuli sequels focus on completely new protagonists as an anthology series, but in the case of Season 2, Fuli Kuli Progressive, I don't think that the writing behind their protagonist is very good. Hidomi Hibajiri as a character is generally silent, keeps to herself, and wears e-girl cat ear headphones to symbolize how she cuts herself off from the rest of the world, with the Aesop being that she needs to get out of her shell, to interact with the world around her. I do think that silent characters can present good opportunities for visual storytelling and can function as a surrogate for the audience or the camera, but the problem with Hidomi is that she's too passive, especially for a Fully Cooly sequel. How is she supposed to be the central character if she keeps getting overshadowed by all the insanity around her? Nauta from Season 1 was definitely along for the ride and on the receiving end of things at times, but he also made a lot of active decisions that affected the plot. Whereas with Hidomi as a character, you have things happening to her, more often than her making things happen. And while she does jump into action near the end of Season 2, the damage has kind of already been done. What doesn't help is that the reason for her becoming more active is mostly that of her love interest, because Fully Cooly Progressive is partially about a romance, which I'm not really invested in because said love interest acts like a transphobic jerk to one of his best friends during his introduction, yet never demonstrates any growth from that later on. Or maybe it's just the framing of the scene that's transphobic, but it still doesn't really paint him in a positive light. Or maybe the show just isn't very good in general. However, my favorite thing about Fully Cooly Progressive is that Haruko, everyone's favorite pink-haired alien dubbed by Kari Walgren, is now the antagonist, because it actually makes a lot of sense for her character. I mean, I know that there's a whole plot thing about how she gets split into two personalities and is separated from her good half, but seeing Haruko as the villain recontextualizes our entire perception of who she is. Suddenly, we realize that she was never really that heroic of a person, Back in Season 1, she manipulated people, played with their emotions just to get what she wanted, including an underage Nauta, and then left them behind after she's done with them. Progressive even goes one step further by revealing that Haruko's desire to summon the alien Atomisk isn't motivated by romance as she so claims, it's motivated by selfishness. She's not in love with Atomisk, she just wants to possess him and control his power. Unlike the faceless specter of Medical Mechanica, who is only represented by a giant clothing iron, Haruko is an actual character who challenges the protagonist the most and sets the plot in motion, which is why I think she's actually the perfect villain for a Fully Cooly sequel. 
and why it's so strange to see her act like such a helpful supporting character in Season 3. In Fooly Cooly Alternative, Haruko doesn't really have much of a role to play in the season's plot. She just kind of shows up, helps fight robots, is super creepy that one time, and that's pretty much it. However, what I do like about Season 3 is another aspect that feels like the complete opposite of Season 2, which is how this time their main protagonist is a well-written character. Unlike Hidomi, Kana Komoto is an active protagonist who voices her opinions, takes actions that affect the majority of Fooly Cooly Alternative's episodes, and has character flaws that are actually really interesting. While Nauta is a character who is dissatisfied with his life and thinks he's more mature than the adults, Kana is a character who clings to her youth, who is terrified of change and doesn't want to see her friend group drift apart, where the majority of the season consists of her thinking that she's helping her friends when she might actually be doing it just to satisfy her own ego, and is also kind of sticking her nose into other people's business without realizing it. Except for that one episode with the photographer guy, he deserves to be broken up with. Anyway, by focusing on Kana's friend group, Fooly Cooly Alternative is the closest that the sequels ever come to recapturing the essence of Fooly Cooly Season 1, because it's actually about adolescence in a tangible manner that is also unique. The theme isn't just viewed through the lens of sexual frustration or romance, but rather platonic relationships. It's about how nothing lasts forever, the impermanence of youth, how you're not always ready to have a significant other, and how some friendships just drift away no matter how hard you cling on to them. Although I think that Spiky Seeds, the ending theme to Fully Cooly Progressive, is my favorite pillow song since Last Dinosaur, and I'm not a fan of some of the camera angles in either of the two sequels, Given the choice between them, I would much rather watch Fooly Cooly Alternative, because it has an active protagonist and a solid narrative throughline that ties back to the theme of the original. Honestly, I kind of wish that instead of two seasons, there was just one season that combined all my favorite elements from Progressive and Alternative into the same package, where you still had Kana Komoto and her friend group stuff, but with Haruko as the villain who would be trying to manipulate Kana's love interest, where this character was actually the grown-up version of Nauta instead of just some guy that Haruko fooled around with once, and where a certain character's behavior was framed as the creepy, dangerous actions that they always were. The plot of a Fooly Cooly sequel shouldn't just be a bunch of alien robot gobbledygook again, it should be about how Haruko needs to be stopped because what else could be a bigger threat to one's youth than an adult who emotionally manipulates them? I'm not saying that the pathetic guy with the eyebrows from season 1 was right, but he was right. They're not perfect, and sometimes they're kind of trashy, but Fooly Cooly Progressive adds new context to the franchise, and Fooly Cooly Alternative gives us a more tangible, personal lens to the theme of adolescence, which reminds us that the franchise isn't just about the visual spectacle of the robots, it's about the character writing and exploring how it feels to be at that specific time in your life. We don't watch the series to learn more about Medical Mechanica or even Atomisk, we watch the show to get inside the headspace of the central protagonist, from Nauta Nandaba to Kana Komoto. They may not be as great as the original, and I definitely prefer one over the other, but Fully Cooly Progressive and Fully Cooly Alternative each demonstrate what works and what doesn't in the franchise that is Fully Cooly. <laughs>